Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth, and what we're going to be talking about in our light unit is the properties of light and a little bit more. So um, basically, we have seen the spectrum before, where it talks about the long radio waves. Um, they're very long. They um, can take quite a distance. Look how many meters that this is. So they can go around even mountains, homes, and places. Then there's AM radio waves. Still, these are again, these are 100 meters long, so they're pretty long, and they go around things pretty well. Um, the FM waves, they're getting pretty small now. They're about one meter long. Microwaves are shorter. Infrared is shorter still. And then now we get to where it's pretty small. We're talking about 400 to 700 nanometers. And that's the visible light spectrum that takes up just a very, very small portion of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum, these waves are coming from all over in space, from the sun, and any type of um, source that we have here on Earth, too, of course, too. Anyway, so if you keep on going past violet, you get ultraviolet, which means above um, violet. And so there's a few different ultraviolet rays, A, B, and C, that we talk about when we look at sunscreen. Okay, then we crank up the frequency some more, and we can actually penetrate more than just the skin. We can penetrate... Um, you know, soft tissues and stuff like that. And then gamma rays or cosmic rays over here, those can actually go through and damage things. Okay, so that's an idea of what the spectrum looks like. And then also I thought this was pretty nifty looking. So you could see other different wavelengths, not really see the wavelengths, but to get an idea of why purple has got much more higher frequency or, or a shorter wavelengths as where red does not. Okay, now the electric field that, that you see of these waves, they're, they're not like the waves that we've been talking about. They're, they're three-dimensional, actually. Uh, the wave is propagating this way. And you've got electric field going up and down, and you've got a magnetic field that is going um, 90 degrees from that. And so uh, for, well, we're discussing light. Here, let me go to another one here. This is a good depiction of how a wave would be propagating three-dimensionally. It's going this way. But yet you've got waves that are going vertically and some that are going horizontally here too. So an X, Y, and a Z axis. Okay, these are electromagnetic waves. They do not um, need any kind of medium. And sometimes medium will slow them down a little bit. But basically, uh, these rays right here do not need any medium. That's why we get them from space, right? So they haven't had any medium to go through it. They're not like mechanical waves of sound waves. Okay, now when you look at this spectrum again, I just want you to get the big ideas of it. And I, I just have this picture on here so you can see the size of some of the, the um, waves. Okay, so just a reminder that as we're adding energy, the wavelengths get shorter because the frequency is getting really quite fast now. And so um, I just wanted to take a peek at that and let you see what these different shaped objects were for the size of the wavelengths. Okay, another thing about the about the whole electromagnetic spectrum is that every single one of these waves travels at the speed of light. Okay, even though it gets a higher frequency, the wavelength is getting shorter. And when you multiply those two together, you get actually the speed of light, which is represented with C. And the speed of light rounded here is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And you should, really should add that to your... Um, resource sheet that you have. Okay, so these waves, we've measured these waves. Oh, you and I even saw them when we looked at our spectroscope of some different infrared, uh, excuse me, some different uh, visible light in our spectroscopes. Okay, now waves also consists, um, I just wanted to show you this, as, as electromagnetic waves, all properties of light, they have these special waves, and this is a pretty neat um, showing the motion of the waves here. So the waves, they oscillate back and forth in both the magnetic field and also the electric field from right angles of each other. And they vary in frequency. So like if you were talking about a higher frequency um, type of wavelength, like um, well, visible light versus uh, radio waves, okay? Those ones would travel slower.
Okay, also in our properties of light, um, light can be polarized. Okay, um, so you have this pretty nifty diagram here. And so um, light from regular sources are not polarized. They, they have, like sunlight has all these different wavelengths in them. I was talking about how it could have infrared, visible light spectrum, and you know, microwaves, all those. Okay, but then when you start to get to a single color of light, or a single wavelength of light, they start to get closer to being synchronized. They're not quite, but they're pretty close. Once they're totally in phase, this is actually a laser. Laser lights, they, they are completely in phase, and so that's um, how that they that their uh, wavelengths would look. Now, as this is being shot at you, this right here is what a polarized light would look like. All of the light comes in in one direction, is polarized, okay? And light beams that they are not, they're complex, are coming in at several different directions, and that is not polarized. So if you go look at polarized glasses, some of you might have polarized sunglasses. They're really nice. Uh, they're polarized to be up and down so that, like, you can see into the water a little bit when you're fishing, and you can see the actual fish when it's kind of shallow, and, um, and the glare is not near as bad um, on the lake, so you can actually see into the water. And also the glare on your the hood of your vehicle isn't so bad either, so that you can um, see a little bit better. So that's why um, polarized sunglasses are pretty nifty to have. Now notice behind here that they are all going in just one direction, up and down, because this is polarized. And we have two big lenses here in the classroom, and when I turn them, remember how that they turn black? Well, that's when it is going the opposite of it. So we're, I'm going to talk about more about that when I return, but... Um, it's pretty interesting to think about how like you can actually go and check to see if the sunglasses you're buying are polarized by going and holding one lens to another set of glasses at, at 90 degrees. If it blocks out all light, then they are definitely polarized. Now, um, we can also show them as rays with, with, um, with, with, well, with rays. And so the sun, it is so far away that all those rays that we usually draw those ones in parallel, Okay, because it's so far away. Now, if you're talking about sources really close, it'll ray out from it and spread out from the source. But from the sun, it's an infinite distance away. So all the sun rays come in pretty much all parallel to one another. Okay, light also behaves as particles. We call these particles photons. They're little packets of light. Okay, little packets of energy. And so this diagram that I have here is kind of neat because it shows that a light source is giving off photons for it, okay? And so it can go past, it, it goes past the barrier, but it doesn't go behind it. And when we have actually seen some light studies, you know, in college you do this, light studies where you uh, create a barrier and then the waves actually go around it, just like they would in water. And so so we know that, that they behave like waves. We even measured them in our spectroscopes, but we also know that they behave like particles too. And, you know, that's pretty nifty when you really think about it. So there's a couple of instances that, that you think about. So if you would think about, okay, the, the garage door opener in your house, at your house, in your garage, it has this array of photons that are going back and it's to, to reach a photoelectric cell across in the door. So if your foot goes across underneath the door, then the garage door will not close, right? It, it knows that you're there. Why is that? That's because that ray, uh, excuse me, the, the stream of photons there have been disrupted, and so it stops, and so it clicks a switch. And so they have neat photoelectric cells that, that, um, that go and change it into electrical impulses, changing a switch. And so that's pretty nifty when you think about it like that also. But you know, there, there's some other reasons why they, they know ex photons exist. When you just go and put light source onto some metal, um, it's able to kick off some, some different light. But another thing is like, how do you explain, like when you go and turn on your toaster and, um, and you see that red element in there and it gets all bright and brilliant and it makes you wonder, well, how does that heat now all of a sudden become light? Well, inside the atom, I'm sure you remember inside the nucleus that there are photon, excuse me, protons and neutrons, and that there's electrons on the outsides. Well, in those different energy levels, when you excite something or add some energy to it, 
it makes the, the electrons go to outer levels of the um, atom. And then when you shut off the light or, or the energy, then it emits light. It just So as the electron jumps back down towards the center of the atom, it emits light. It's a really neat theory about it. It doesn't work on too many atoms more than, than hydrogen, but it's a really neat theory about how we can get light from heat um, from two different sources there. Anyway, I'm moving on. Also, we talked about briefly about this. So here you have a light source, okay? And the further you move away, the less, the, I mean, it becomes more dim, right? It decreases in its brightness. I see I spelled that wrong. Anyway, so there, there's a formula for that to help figure that out. So each, each um, from, from the radius, from, from the center of this out, that's the radius. And so that, that you go and take that radius and you take the square root of his, of his inverse here. So uh, the intensity here. So think about this. So here you've got this with full intensity. It equals 1. And then that whole intensity is still just right here in one square. So now it's spread out over four of them. So it's now one-fourth of the light in each one of these. This is one-ninth of the light. And the next would be one-sixteenth of the light. So it keeps on decreasing how much um, electric, you know, electromagnetic radiation that there is or else brightness of the source. Okay, and then we're getting close to the end of our notes. We, we've already talked about this, and we have other notes about this, but we've talked about in our lab even the angle of incidence and the angle of re reflection. So here is the normal that is going out perpendicular from the mirror surface. Okay, and the incident ray is the ray that's coming in, and then you're seeing something over here with your eye. It's reflected off that mirror into here. So maybe you see something over here, and your eye is seeing where it's at and where it's located. It was... These two angles right here, the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection, are, are congruent. And so um, we had a little bit of fun with some mirrors in the classroom, and we were able to look at how the, that we could investigate where that those um, objects would be. Now, we're also using curved mirrors, and there's still a normal right here. And so there's an angle of incidence and an angle of reflection here, too. So each one of our rays has got that kind of situation going on. Anyway, we have other notes that we have with, the, with our curved mirrors, and um, we'll continue working on those problems, and I will see you uh, later.